Hello, welcome to Windows Virtual Desktop. I wanted to walk through the user experience using the Windows client. First off, I wanted to point out where you can get it. All of the, the binary clients for Windows Virtual Desktop are accessible, accessible from the Microsoft website and downloadable. So just go into Bing, my favorite search engine, and type in download WVD or Windows Virtual Desktop and it'll probably also highlight this page. What a user would need to do or you would need to do would be point them here to install one of the, the Windows versions of the full client. You could also um, point them here to for instructions on how to use the web client to connect to Android, Mac OS, or iOS. So there are actually four native clients available, uh, plus the web client, which uses a well-known URL. I'll show you that as well. And there's also uh, iGel has a really great Linux third client. That, that works super well with Windows Virtual Desktop. Once it's downloaded and installed, you merely fire it up, and I've got it uh, pinned to my taskbar, and then hit subscribe. I'm gonna actually uh, connect to a deployment that I have in Azure Government. And basically, all, what I'm doing here is putting in the UPN, or the uh, essentially my Office 365 email address for my Azure Government user. And then it's going to customize the client for me. And actually, once I finish with my authentication, of course, uh, if I had MFA enabled on this account, which I should, uh, it's, a, it's a test account without any data or access, really, um, uh, it, it would have prompted me for that. But I'm going to enter my password, just like I would going to portal.office.com to check my mail or the, the government equivalent. And then when I, uh, after I've subscribed, all of the applications and desktops that are available to me have been published. Um, and they're going to be available for me to double click on and use. So I'm going to fire up a couple of these just to show you what they look like. If you were a developer, for example, you could fire up RStudio or a database resource. So I'm going to get a secondary authentication prompt now. And this is because I don't have ADFS deployed uh, or the, the upcoming update that's coming with WVD. What, what's happening now? What's happening now is it's authenticating me to the backend VM it's chosen for me to use for this service. The, uh, the actual application popped on my other screen. Let me pull it over. If I can get to it. And our studio is sitting right here. So what, what, it, what it's actually done is pop it open. We can see I still I get a full rich desktop experience whereby the, the thumbnail is showing up from the, the taskbar when I highlight it. But I've now, I'm now running RStudio hundreds of miles away uh, in Windows Virtual Desktop in one of the Microsoft data centers that's available. I'm going to open up a couple other applications as well. This is FreeCAD, which is an open source CAD application that uh, I, I periodically uh, use and highlight. And we'll see. It also gives me a local user experience when I'm clicking on it. I'm going to open up this robot arm and show you. Uh, I'm up in the, the northeast north of New York City, and this is running down in Virginia, and I get a really great experience rotating, uh, and this is all via RDP, secure RDP protocol. It's available to me. These two applications can, uh, even though they're, these are actually running on the same host in the back end, but I can open up other sessions from lower power hosts that are published to other users as well. For example, I can pop open Outlook. We'll see that I get the authentication prompt uh, here as well, because it's it's actually opening this on a, a different host on the back end, and I didn't check the box to uh, save my credentials, just so I'll, I can point out the, the authentication prompt. And here we see I've got Outlook fired up, and I'm getting important emails from folks out on the internet. The nice thing about being able to open individual apps like this is you don't have to uh, open up the entire desktop or uh, experience the entire desktop experience. So if I were on an iPad right now or an Android tablet, it'd be a lot more convenient for me merely to get to my full Outlook client uh, rather than fire up a full desktop and then go into it. And it's, it's a, I think, a better experience on those devices, which are generally always connected anyway, because I can install this relatively light uh, Windows remote desktop client and not have to download all my email for a full, rich search enabled experience which is kind of cool anyway i'm going to minimize these various applications and then also point out uh, a couple of things I, I can fire up a desktop i'm not going to do that right now here 
simply because I've got multiple monitors and it'll pop across all those monitors. I'll show you that in the web UI. But I also wanted to point out the fact that we can publish individual websites if we'd like. And one of the neat things about WVD is because it has the ability to use MFA prompts on the front end, I can essentially secure internal websites uh, through WVD and publish them uh, regardless of the end user device and give a full rich browser experience. An example of that is uh, an, uh, an organization might have, say, uh, a heritage timekeeping application that's only compatible with uh, Internet Explorer. So I can actually publish Internet Explorer for those apps behind multi-factor authentication using the Azure Active Directory credentials that personalized all this to an iPhone. So if, for example, again, somebody had a, a, a legacy timekeeping application that only worked with IE, they could, they could let people in this era of COVID access that application from an Android tablet or a, an iPad or iPhone on the go one of the benefits of the binary client is the Windows 10 uh, or Windows integration with Teams in that uh, we can redirect the audio and video streams for Windows uh, to the client. We optimize the flow of calls. So rather than initiating a call from the, the Teams client in Azure where WVD would run and then pushing the the stream down to the user, we can actually take advantage of uh, enhancements in Windows, WBD, and Teams that allow for that audio stream or that call to go directly to the end Windows client. One other thing I should show about the Windows 10 client that's pretty cool as a benefit is the integration with the desktop. So it when I provisioned it up and, and personalized it by logging in, I got this uh, application uh, folder on my start menu that allows me to pin applications that are published from over here to my start menu or my taskbar, which is kind of cool. So I can click there and pop open applications uh, that uh, are published through WVD. So in this case, I popped open another instance of uh, my ro my robot uh, robot application in the back end, which of course I already had running. So I've got now multiple versions of my CAD app running. Anyway, thanks for watching the WBD Windows Client walkthrough.